Welcome back to Scandalous Los Angeles TV, where we expose the exposers. Today we'll be looking at CS2 back's new recruit, Rod Zay the Rat. Rod Zay took to Clubhouse the other day and attempted to turn Spider Loke on Big U. Rod Zay signed a big deal with the federal informant, WAC 100. Oh, also, um, shout out to Rod Zay from the hood. You know, it's a big bro. He got some big stuff coming. He was just offered a major major deal for his life rights and his story. I don't know if he took it, but he was showing some money. <laughs> like he might've got an advance on it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't ask him about it. I didn't talk to him today. I might call him later on to check in on him. But uh, yeah, yeah, he got a nice offer. You know what I'm saying? Shout out WAC 100. You know what I'm saying? Shout out the team. You know, WAC always want to make sure his team eat. WAC always want to make sure everybody around him eats. And when everybody around you eats, that limits people from asking for stuff. I'm not saying that that's why he do it, to stop people from asking. But he's got a big heart, you know what I'm saying? He's like me. If you're around me, we're going to try to eat somehow. We're going to try and blend you in. We're going to try and throw you in, squeeze you in the program somehow, some way. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got to eat, you know what I'm saying? We ain't never, well, I'm not never, and I'm no whack, ain't never no selfish mouth type person, you know what I'm saying? So. You just heard Love's Boys calling out to all rats in the area. He's letting them all know, if you come be a part of him and Wax Rat Pack, they'll make sure you eat too. So as you can see, CS2 back has traveled all the way down to 10th Avenue and Hyde Park to hand out cheese. If what Love's Boys said isn't enough to believe Wack is paying these guys, let's look at what Rodze had to say in response to a comment left by a random content viewer. Let's read the comment that Rodze is going to respond to first. It says, It's literally a bunch of YouTube videos with y'all arguing, so how would I know which one explains how it started? All I'm saying is that you all better watch Wack. He has a personal bone to pick with you and is using y'all to go at him. Wack is very phony. I don't see how teaming up with him helps you in the long run. Let God avenge you and you move on with your life. Now look at Rod Zay's response. I do this shit for free. The fact that I can get paid makes it all the sweetest. So by his own admission, he's being paid to run this smut campaign. And shortly thereafter, Rodze showed up on Clubhouse to smut his big homie, Big U. Officer Reggie Wright Jr. says he finds it funny that these crypt dudes are letting CS2 backplay them like puppets. That doesn't matter to Rodze, though. Rat 100 got the cheese, and the Clubhouse mouse, Rodze wants his slice. Yeah, Neighborhood. Yeah. Neighborhood, what's up with it, cuz? Hey, hey, Luth, do you, do you see the similarities in the twist? Of course, but that's what I've been trying to tell everybody. And when I try to tell everybody um, the shit that he do, now everybody is, is starting to see when other people start coming out. Cuz been doing this and getting away with the same shit. You get what I'm saying? And then he put homies in the twist. He benefits off of it. And then he do um, fuck shit by trying to use other people as scapegoats. Now that shit is out. We all know the voice of that lying rat, and we all know that nothing that comes out of his mouth is factual. Sad part about it is all it took was a piece of Rat 100's cheese for Rodze to show up with this fraud, flushing any amount of integrity he had left down the drain. Man. <laughs> Bro, it, man, it's so much stuff. I'm just waiting for a shot, man. Go ahead and keep let him say something. You know, cuz ain't gonna say anything because the thing is, you have to understand he respect the shooters, and, and, and cuz feel like he ain't gonna play with us. We, we, we those guys, and that's it. Hey, hey, that, that's a fact, lose, lose. I've been seeing you do your thing lately. I ain't gonna lie. I've been wondering, what's up with that dude, Sp I seen Spider, he's been trying to go at you lately, man, but I've seen you been on his ass lately. Listen to CS2 back's professional nut hugger, Beast the Teeth. Not much needs to be said about a sloppy sluggard like him. I don't care if Beast is standing directly in front of me, or if he is 100 yards away, he will always fit the profile of a pedophile. Dude look like a sexual predator. Yeah, Spider is a sweetheart, you know. Because uh, it's a homeless nigga that, uh, you know, he's trying to get his name. Maybe doing those videos and stuff like that because he go and get his kids some steak and, you know, rice and, um, you know, buy some food 
food so that depending on ebt every single month you know you you have to let the homeless niggas play their part you got to look at this also i want to ask spider had this dude ever cracked the door for the east coasts rod zay you should be ashamed of yourself I'd expect a comment like that from Love's Boys because he's never been a crip. And how long did you make it into the college football? I'm going to be real with you. I kind of like was smart with my situation. I wasn't like a person who was always hanging on the block, putting in work every day since I was a little kid. I was doing something different. Like I said, I'm playing football. I'm going out of town. I'm going to college. Mm -hmm. I'll come back and be in the BS, but I'm gone next day. But I'm gone next day. But I'm gone next day. Mm -hmm. Even when I got done with that, I was like, you know, I guess I can say, I'm not incriminating myself, but going in and out of town, making money. Mm. So even with that, I wasn't on the block every day gangbanging. I was always doing something else. Mm -hmm. Even when I got down to street life, I was boxing. Okay. In and out of town, in the gym, doing this, that. So I was never just sitting in the, in the hood on the block waiting for bullets and handcuffs. So is there a period of time between football and boxing where you were just hanging out in the neighborhood? No, never. No, never. No, never, never, never. Yo, Crippin is swag. You just asked Spider if Big U has ever cracked a door open for the Kosis. What is that? It was 83 and uh, 85 and 84, too. What's the history behind Rolling Coaster? Rolling Coaster started, Petey Wax started that from 6 0. He just started hollering it over the tear one night. We all was in there. We started getting tight because Big U had belt out my homie Rat. We started getting tight because Big U had belt out my homie Rat. Big U had belt out my homie Rat from 76. Big U put the money on belt him out. Lil Doc just said the six O's and the Kosas started getting real tight because Big U bailed out Rat from 76. So Big U literally cracked the door open for Rat. Ask Rat if Big U ever opened the door for any Kosis. If you're talking about music, just give me the long list of people that Big U cracked the door open for. You act like he has a bunch of artists in the industry or something. How about this Rodze? Tell me how many Bloods or Pyrus has CS2 back cracked the doors open for. He's supposed to be a Pyru Blood, ain't he? I know 600 don't even know who Lil Doc is, but you're supposed to know better Rodze. It's all good. I understand. CS2 back. Got that cheese that melts in your mouth. I was in Fort 800. I had, uh, I mean, like I said, I, I knew all the coaches because we had uh, run together. And uh, Snake, Baby Snake was my road dog and, and from the Deuce. So we was all road, we was all road dogs. We was in Fort 800. So at night, everybody should get a hood up, say they sit. And so me and all the me and all the homies, me and all the young dudes from the coast, we used to always be, you know, putting all the raps together and saying all our songs together. And we used to roller coaster, roller coaster, neighborhoods, like that. And you know, back then, early '80s, like that. You know, on the east side, we ain't have no parents that can bail us out. You come in there for any try to cry. You in there, our parents is on welfare and shit. We, they getting food snaps and shit. How the fuck they gonna bail you out? So we we know our asses was stuck whenever we went to jail on these side. We poor as a motherfucker. We ain't nobody got nobody. Your ass go to jail, you in there. You feel me? So Rat, when Big U bailed Rat out, we was like, damn, this nigga bailed the homie out. So Rat, when Big U bailed Rat out, we was like, damn, this nigga bailed the homie out. So Rat, when Big U bailed Rat out, we was like, damn, this nigga bailed the homie out. Rat go out of there to the streets, been in there. So that that showed us that Six O's had love for us like that. So that that showed us that Six O's had love for us like that. Doc just explained that Big U bailing Rat out of jail showed the Kosis that the 60s really had love for him. All it took was just a piece of that cheese for you to go out bad, Rodze. So we was in there hanging together tight and started embracing one another. Uh, you, you, the thing with, with a Spider is, and 600 no, right? 600, you, you, God is my witness on the dead homies. Didn't Cuz tell you, I brought food for his kids. 
didn't cuz tell you that I got him a place and everything like that when he was sleeping in a car. We already know if Cannon is talking, there's a 97% chance that he's lying for some odd reason when it comes to Spider. Cannon always makes up lies about buying him things. According to Cannon, he's been buying things for Spider since 2006, before they ever met. <laughs> You could have came up with a better hook. My nigga, if you need beats, nigga, I still have love for you. Nigga, even though I was buying your ass swishers and motherfuckers, I can't give you, get a phone call from your ass no more. He, you he had a um, Nissan or Mitsubishi Mirage. They don't even make those anymore, but he had one, right? And Cuz had all his kids in the car. Cuz begged me for help. I got him a place. I filled up the refrigerator, gave Cuz like $500, and I said, Go get you a job because this rap shit is not for you. And that's what Cuz did. 600, I'm lying. Man, I just can't see why why he going to bat for Big U. What do, <laughs> what do Big U got on him? Got on who? On Spider. Why is he going to bat for Big U? Big U ain't never I did think nothing that for got the coast. Something to do it. Rodze, what are you asking Spider to do? You want him to go online and say he saw Big U with 20 guns? and that he was selling them to his homies? Or should he do like you and go online saying Big U had Gilly robbed? All this for that little piece of cheese, Rod Zay. You supposed to be the big homie. How you let a clown like Love's Boys walk you into some shit like this? He been hating on me ever since he begged me for an album deal. Because you know Big you don't even fuck with the coasters like that, you know that. Yeah, the, he don't like him. <clears throat> he don't like him, you know, I know that, you know that. So, he don't like the coasters. Remember that this is the narrative and the dynamic that Rodze has brought to the table. Now the narrative is that Big U doesn't like the East Coasts. We just heard one of the main reasons why the Six O's and the Coasts are so close. And Big U's name was all in it. All this is being done because CS2 backs cheese melts in your mouth. He say they trying to be the East Side 60s. So why are you so in debt to pick you? Uh, he ain't never fuck with him, did nothing for him. Nothing, bro. That was Nip did that shit out of spite. He went over there to mess with you. That wasn't Big U. That's why Nip went over there to fuck with him. Out of, sp out of spite to Big U. <laughs> because Big U tried to lock out the coasts. He didn't want him in the game. But see, nope. Spider and and Spider knows too because when I I talked to Fifty Cent and I told Spider, I said you were just a um, you know you were just a tax write off. Spider Low, Fifty Cent told me I know it's gonna break your heart, but your album is never coming out. These guys will eventually learn that Cannon is not an asset; he is a liability. This interview was from two thousand six. Cannon just said he had spoke to 50 Cent way back then. But in another interview, Cannon said Nipsey is the one who introduced him to 50. You can't listen to anything that comes out this clown's mouth. I know you're a little younger than Nip, but did he, did he influence you to rap, or how was that? Yeah, yeah, so, uh, like, Nip, it was like, um, cause he was, like, ahead of his time. So it's like, he started doing shit that other people was um was trying to do he he took the master p route and he applied it to um uh, like some south central shit and that's when um basically um i just started doing things he was like produce produce this record do this do this do that or whatever so everybody that he was around he took me around uh -huh. so he took me around so it's like I, that's how i meant 50 cent that's how i meant 50 cent that's how i meant 50 cent because i told cuz i said what type of nigga go against the west coast to grain you went against game for an east coast nigga spider didn't go against game for an east coast nigga he went against game because spider got g unit tatted in his flesh he wasn't just a g unit artist Spider was a G-Unit Crip. He gang-banged G-Unit. And the game was all through the city running a GU not campaign. Remember, 
Fifty Cent told Spider not to respond to game, to just ignore his dissin, but Spider went against the East Coast niggas' wishes and did not just a diss song, but an entire diss mixtape and a documentary. I'm not sure if Spider is aware or not, but this is the true reason that Fifty was not allowed to put his album out. I want you to listen to something Reggie Wright said about Interscope Records censoring Death Row back in the day. Um, do you, can you remember any um, particular words that Interscope would censor on songs? Because I know oh. there's some songs where, like on Method Man's verse on um, Got My Mind Made Up, there's certain words that are like um, silenced out. Man, that was a big controversy. Big controversy. We can call our black women bitches and hoes and all that. It was a verse I forget on either Snoop where he said, and originally it was supposed to be my Jew bitch, my Jew bitch. They made him change it to something else. They made him change it to something else. But they would not let us use the word Jew or Jewish. They would not let us use the word Jew or Jewish. So you heard what Reggie said about Interscope Records and how they would not allow artists under their umbrella to use the word Jew or Jewish. On the same mixtape Spider put out in retaliation to Games Disses, listen to what he says. I'm a blue pill. Spider get judo. Get it? Jimmy Iveen Green. Judo. You can't stop. I'm a blue pill. Spider get judo. Get it? Jimmy Iveen Green. Judo. You can't what you have to understand is 50 told Spider not to respond to game, and he did it anyway. This showed that 50 would not be able to control Spider, and the music industry is all about control. If they can't control you, they get rid of you. Simple. Whether you believe it or not, 50 Cent had to answer for that lyric, and you can be certain that he informed Jimmy that he instructed Spider not to respond. Now when Spider said the line, Jimmy Iveen Green, Judo, he was in no way trying to be discriminative. The line was actually a showing of admiration to the lucrative business success Jimmy and others like him have had. But what most people do not understand is that speaking about them having money feeds into what they call a dangerous anti-Semitic stereotype of greed. Remember Reggie said they wouldn't even let you say the word, but Spider did more than say the word. He said the word and tied it to money. Yes, this is the world we live in, and this is how it works. Still don't believe me. Listen to what the Anti-Defamation League says about it. Welcome to Anti-Semitism Uncovered, a video series by ADL created to explain and combat the most common anti-Semitic myths. One of the most prominent and persistent stereotypes about Jews is that they are greedy and avaricious. They are seen both as relentless in the pursuit of wealth and also as stingy misers determined not to let any money slip from their grasp. These myths often imply that Jewish wealth is undeserved, that any wealth acquired by a Jew is from cheating. The truth is that Jews, like all other people in the United States and around the world, exist across a spectrum of socioeconomic status. Some are poor, some are wealthy. It's wrong to assume that any wealth accumulated by Jews signifies Jewish greed, rather than the results of disciplined hard work done. For centuries, dangerous conspiracies have circulated from varying political factions on Jewish control of the economy and economic institutions, perpetuating the idea that Jews are acquisitive, hungry for access to and control of money. Federal Reserve ain't no governmental operation. That's a family of rich Jewish people who print the money. The stereotype of Jewish greed took hold in the Middle Ages. In many European countries, Jews were denied citizenship, and with it the rights of holding a position in government, military, or certain professions, thus relegated by Christian leaders to collecting taxes and rent. This created conflict between Jews and Christians, and resulted in the development of stereotypes and characters such as Shylock, the greedy Jewish moneylender in Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice. An important part of the Jewish faith is the tradition of tzedakah. This is the spiritual idea of charity and giving, in which Jewish people will donate time, effort, and money to those in need. 
We must also remember even intended compliments such as Jews are good with money. Even intended compliments, even intended compliments, even intended compliments such as Jews are good with money or all Jews are well off contribute to a dangerous stereotype. I'm sure a lot of you guys never knew that. But like I always say, you learn something new every day. You don't have to believe me, but just know, your disbelief doesn't mean that this isn't happening. You get what I'm saying? And I yeah. said, like, that was on some fuck shit. You get what I'm saying? Like, if yeah. you're going to be solid and you're going to be a real nigga and stuff like that, you just stay out of it. You're like, yeah, that don't have nothing to do with me because he's from the West Coast. But his loyalty was on some other shit, like some fuck shit. Imagine loose lion King Cannon the Clown talking about loyalty as he sides with CS2 back. So he got what he, he deserved. The niggas got a one bedroom apartment. He make videos out of it. And you know, that's the best he gonna get. This is the best light and shine that he gonna ever get between me and Wack. Okay, this, I, I wanna say this to Spider Low. He gotta hear this. Spider, me and Snoopy Blue was inside Echo Park halfway house. He had me take his music to Big U. Before I could even hand it over, that shit was frisbeed out the window. Mm -mm -mm. Rest in peace, Snoopy Blue. So I'll end by saying this. Rod Zay, I'm just gonna let you know that Snoopy Blue isn't a good example to use when trying to turn Spider in your favor. Before Snoopy Blue passed, not only did he run a one-man smut campaign on Spider, he also got on the stand and testified on behalf of the prosecution against the Bebops. However, I'm not one to speak on the deceased as you guys seem to love to. I'm just wondering what was Big U supposed to do with Snoopy Blue's music? Was he supposed to take his music to whack or something? Maybe Big U just wasn't a fan of Snoopy Blue. How does that mean he hated the East Coasts? You guys can all see how CS2 backs money is being put to use. And if you enjoyed the content, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell to receive notifications in the future. Spider get judo, get it? Jimmy Iveen Green, judo. You can't spell the West without the E and S. Those just sound depressed. Must be his PMS. Drop it two hands naked and fuck on his period. We gang bang gorillas, can't fuck with his period. Damn, how much dick in the murder game handle? With his red toenails and his hurricane sandals. G West bangers active in California. Whack war, whack. Take that shit back to Oklahoma. Joe, we know we a homie. We was banging, I was hanging with his OG home. Awfully professional, I knock off amateurs. You can be the next to get caught on camera. Abracadabra, fall back, faggot. A crip on game dick, I call that man. I'm on the throne, your baby mama all on my dome. And you can tell your mama, stop calling my phone. It's on. What you mean that 
that's for big face. Homosexual? What you mean how to dictate? This ain't no script. I'm real life dangerous. Killing your career got you feeling like dangerous. I get more cheddar. I spit more wetter. But till you gone, the West won't get no better. You hear this shit? Nigga shitting on the track. No fabrications, just spitting on the facts. He don't know all the mess he started. Yes, he's starving, but this could get messy more than Sebo told me. Don't do him like that. But he spoke on the low like he knew me like that. I ain't, I ain't never met him before, but I'm a banger. I'm just letting you know. The kill still talking, but everybody know the real. Game over, it's just overkill. Spot a loco, bang the most. This G West Paymac, bang the dose. Y'all sound like busters, banging coasts. Ain't no hood out back. Bang the coast. Can't no hood out, bang the lanes on the flame. You fucking with a banger game. Area code, three one zero one zero four two zero eight five seven two. I love you, mama. I love you, mama. Shame on me. Shame on me. I know I ain't, I know shit. I ain't shit, but it's the truth, but it's the truth though. though. On my dead homie.